Gemini. Let me um, <laughs> turn my cards over so that I'm not shuffling them face side up and do this a little bit so it's not so lopsided. How are you doing? This is for May 2020, a general tarot reading. I'm Raina and to see what comes up here and what that represents. Wow, that's some emotionally... I always end with... Um, and, you know, if I get like a Five of Cups type of card, I, I do pick another card. So it's like... What I can see here is that there's like... Um, you know, the you have to take the bitter with the sweet for some reason. So, speaking of the bitter, <laughs> um, the heart of the matter is the Three of Swords. So, usually with this heart of the matter card, we're talking about an ongoing situation, not something that necessarily develops as the month goes on, but something that you, you might be dealing with this right now. And it could be, because um, this card, um, the Five of Cups, may be in the similar vein of being some sort of disappointment. Feeling rejected is actually the Three of Swords and feeling like, uh, you know, you're being passed over. So for instance, a um, a job, a, a, a position that you were hoping that you would get that went to somebody else. And how do you reconcile that? How do you deal with that understanding? <coughs> What do you tell yourself about that situation? And um, in the past position, and in this could also be like with love too. Um, in the past position, we have the Temperance card, which actually connects with your opposite sign, Sagittarius. And so if this is a romantic relationship, and maybe there's somebody... Actually, it's funny, the Queen of Wands is also Sagittarius. So, strong Sagittarian energy, um, and uh, it's interesting because in May, astrologically, trying to see that Sagittarius connection, we're going to have the North Node going into your sign, which is very exciting, should be very exciting for you, and that means the South Node is going into Sag, the, the, the opposite house of Gemini is the seven, you know, the first house of the self is the seventh house of committed partnership. So this is where the south node is residing. And um, also in June, there will be a lunar eclipse in this house, in, you know, in, uh, on June 5th at 15 degrees of Sagittarius. So this may be a prelude to that because even if there's an ending to a relationship or some kind of like a, a realization you have about a significant other, chances are this is not something that just comes out of nowhere. Even if you initially think it's something that you knew nothing about, you will realize, you know, we were drifting apart a while ago. So with the Three of Swords, you may feel rejected if this other person makes the move to leave. And um, I have heard astro astrologers talk about the lunar uh, talk about eclipses and say that they can occur even um, before the actual date. So in May, you may actually um, experience this and. By the way, there's going to be a Venus retrograde in your sign as well. So there may be something with drama in relationships for you, Gemini. But I want to say something about that because I don't think that this is happening to you. I think it's happening for you. And Gemini, the, the saving grace of Gemini is that you are able to bounce back 
from any kind of situation that's emotionally heavy because you kind of um, are able to keep that detachment going. And I know there are some Geminis that are going to be more emotional than others. And that's, that's kind of a, a broad statement. But the point that I'm trying to make is that this is a, a period of time when the North Node is in your sign. That means it's in the first house. And this means that things that are connected to you personally are, you know, destiny calling. So if there is a relationship that you already suspect is going to end or has recently ended and you're still picking up the pieces, understand that um, that may have happened to make way for a lot of exciting personal growth, change, and uh, experiences in general that are very... Um, you know, it could be exhilarating for you as as well. And with the Temperance card too, um, perhaps some of you are even more um, philosophical now than you were before. And so you're not just looking at things uh, from the mundane perspective. And that has, so that this has been a catalyst for your personal growth. And that's awesome as well. Um, as the higher message, this is kind of like about, to me, about, you look at that, that sunflower, about honoring the self and having that confidence and the emotional positivity that transcends any kind of uh, situation that isn't what you wanted, isn't what you expected. And... Obviously, it can be a little bit hard to accept when something happens that you didn't initiate yourself, if that's what actually did happen. But the upside of it is that you can learn about yourself even more. You can gain that strength. The, the, the wands, the fire energy, I said that that card is uh, specifically connected to um, Sag and and Leo is the is the fire sign that I think it really belongs to because of the sunflower and the royalty angle and just what Leo represents but it doesn't really matter uh, Aries is the other fire sign so if there's any people like this that are also in your life who are supportive this is a spiritual position. So it's more about what you embody than any kind of mundane event that is occurring. And to me, it's that you're, there's a sense of growth with wands, with fire energy and autonomy. That means that when things happen, it doesn't have to just destroy you because you have that, it's like that equanimity that kind of inner, um, it's not just calm, it's like balance. And you're able to weather these storms, but also the confidence. That's why I say where the balance comes from. Confidence meaning that you know that you're good enough. When somebody um, is broken up with, I mean, if this resonates with you with the Three of Swords, that can feel like, somebody is telling you you're not good enough for me and that's absolutely silly because some sometimes people break up with the other person because they don't feel good enough and the relationship's getting closer uh you know more intimate maybe to the point of commitment and that other person is getting nervous because they really don't love themselves and they can't accept your love so you can't just jump to the conclusion that it means that you're not good enough. And that's, that's your power. That's what you have control over. What crosses you is the Page of Cups. This is a card um, associated with Pisces, as you can see with the fish. And um, what the, the kind of challenging traits of Pisces that this could connect with is this idea of believing what somebody says instead of what they do. And so going back to what I had said earlier, 
let's say that this is about infidelity. Oh yeah, you know, I didn't say this, but um, the Three of Swords can be like a um, lover's triangle. And I could see like a Gemini person getting into these over and over again and that could have something to do with your own fear of intimacy or because you're a Gemini you want two of everything and so you think that you can handle having two relationships at one time not realizing how much it costs you emotionally <clears throat> excuse me and so with the page of cups if you're the one that is the um, unwilling participant in this and you have found out that your partner has a um, and is having an affair for instance and you don't want to end the relationship um, and maybe that person is not being straight you know that they are maybe you even have proof of it the page of, or, or they've they've gone away whatever that situation is the point is is that the page of cups is to me sticking your head in the sand long ago and not realizing what was happening. Maybe you're so busy, you know, Gemini's got a finger in all these different pies, you know. Um, <laughs> and you might have been distracted, busy, not um, paying attention to what was going on in your relationship and that um, and, or maybe even just believing ridiculous excuses that you shouldn't have done so. If your moon is in Pisces, and this is kind of talking about your emotional nature, that you have a tendency, or if you have Venus square Neptune, Neptune rules Pisces. So all of those things where the person's in denial and, and they don't really deal with these things, they don't nip it in the bud, and then it kind of like mushrooms, you know what I mean? And it comes to that head which could be that lunar eclipse um, energy uh, what's coming in is the ten of pentacles um, this is a, a card like if there's something at work where there was a like you didn't get a promotion this card is a card of generational wealth uh, so it could even but it can mean like a lot of money so you, for, I don't know how this would um, transpire, but in some way, you may eventually get some kind of monetary, whether it's a raise, or if you do get some kind of um, promotion in the future. Now I'm thinking, let me think of when I, I could pinpoint that. Because, like, a full moon in the 10th house, for instance. Oh, you know, even even earlier than that, um, I think this is interesting because the full moon in Scorpio on May 7th will fall in your 6th house of work. So this could be, for those people that this resonates, this could be some kind of a thing that you find out in the workplace. Maybe a coworker tells you that has to do with, you know, I'm getting the promotion. And if you have, you know, some kind of documentation that this is was not fair and that you can do it, maybe you can get money uh, coming to you uh, from a legal settlement that is connected to this or there's another uh, possible opportunity for you to get a, a a promotion later on this year in your 10th house of career which is the sign of Pisces there is going to be a full moon I think September 2nd or something like that so maybe it comes uh, you know in six months or so or a few months less than six months actually and and if you like what you do you may just decide to kind of uh, stick it out and suck it up, Buttercup, and then you still prevail later on. I don't know. You know, I just kind of go with this. But if this is something in your personal life, um, this could be, I mean, you have like these two cards that are sandwiching this card that are very positive, 
and to the ten of pentacles is supposed to be a very passive card in a love reading now obviously this is a general reading so i'm including different areas of life but if i'm interpreting it specifically for love i mean it could be that kind of person that has a um a valuable part of your life you know not just like an affair but something that is a, a long-term relationship and the outcome this is the the five of cups is a card of mourning the loss of something now why did i pick an additional card well because to me there are certain cards that they don't give that sense of closure and mourning the loss of something is kind of how we started the reading uh with the three of swords um, i think sometimes the three of swords is more about taking something personally that you feel that the loss is because of something deficient within you uh, five of cups is more so because uh, swords relate to thought your uh, swords being an air sign the cups are your emotions so it's about um maybe being able to purge those emotions so that you can move on with your life and maybe this is um a chance for you to let go of all of those um things that that created that sense of uh you know challenging emotion for you um because you have something positive with the ten of pentacles coming into your life because then when i picked a clarification card i got the sun card and the sun card is everything positive it's the it's love it's uh, prosperity it's success it's joy um and it's also associated with leo so there you go with the queen of wands and then there so um that's why when I was putting out these cards, I was thinking, you know, there's some challenging cards, but there's some nice cards, too. So um, it's kind of like taking the bitter with the sweet and being able to navigate through something that feels like it's a negative thing, but is, is really the universe in disguise um, kind of bumping you up a notch so that you can um, expand even more so Gemini so anyway I hope that you received something from this if you would like a personal reading um, I am astrology based so I do a lot of astrological readings and you can find me at rainamoonastrology.com the link is below take care bye